Good morning folks, I'm Sarah. You're very welcome to my channel, So Me Sarah. This channel is all about cross stitching and other needlework and I hope that you are in the right place <laughs> and that if you're coming back it's because you've enjoyed previous videos and that if you're new here that you will find something that you like and will hit the subscribe button to come back in future. If you are new, thanks for giving the channel a try. Um, here on So Me Sarah, I like to have um, chat and community with you, so feel free to use the comments and let me know what you're thinking um, <clears throat> down below. And uh, we can continue the conversation then beyond the recording of this in my kitchen. <laughs> So since the last time we met, I wanted to say thank you very much for engaging with me um, through the comments all about the chat on Zweigart pre-cut fabrics. So I did talk mostly in the last video, mostly about the linen availability of linens in Zweigart pre-cuts, but there is also a wide range of um, the even weaves, the Lugano, Murano and, and the Adas as well. Um, so I'm glad that you enjoyed that chat. <clears throat> Excuse me, I am still froggy after all of these weeks. <clears throat> um, I'm glad that you enjoyed that chat. I was not trying to diss anything to do with the hand dyed fabrics because they're beautiful and I will add to my stash eventually one day when I can see and feel and touch them. <laughs> and as I said last time, I've been privileged to have been gifted a few beautiful pieces. But what I wanted to do last time was just to give a little bit of air time to the alternative to what is available other than hand dyed fabrics because the hand dyeds get lots of air time on floss tube as many of you well know. Um, so it was just an opportunity last time to show you what's available and unfortunately it doesn't seem that the pre-cuts are available everywhere. Um, here in the UK I do source mine at Wool Warehouse um, the details are all on the last video if you are interested, so you can go and find the links there. <clears throat> what was interesting to know is that a number of you from the US and from Canada have used Wool Warehouse in the UK um, for some orders of pre-cuts um, uh, and wool, actually. Um, and I knew, I already knew that Stacy at 911 Stitcher, um, she likes to crochet, so I knew that Stacy had um, had success ordering wool from Wool Warehouse, but I didn't know that I didn't know anyone who had who had tried the pre-cuts. So several of you have said that you have tried the pre-cuts, that you were happy with the shipping costs and and the service that was provided. So that is good to know that if you can't source the pre-cut um, Spygart linens, it is even weaves um, where you are, perhaps you could look, perhaps the shipping isn't outrageous and you could have a look. So if you want any of that information detail, please go back and have a little look at the notes in the last video. Um, I also wanted to mention that, sorry, I'm, I'm just checking my notes because I've got a lot of things I want to be sure I cover today. I'm, um, I don't want to get to the end of the video and realise I didn't say half of it. So um, one of you commented yesterday actually and, um, and said that what I didn't mention about the Spike Art fabrics was about the feel of them um, because you were interested in how they feel. So I'm sorry that I didn't think to do that. These are the pre-cuts that we're, I'm talking about actually. Um, so I was talking mainly about the linens um, but I have tried Ada and even Weaves Murano and Lugana. I've tried them all. The best that I can do in terms of describing the feel of the fabric is to say that it's not loosey-goosey <laughs> and it's not crunchy. So it's somewhere in a happy medium um, in between. When I work with it, I feel like it gets softer. So perhaps I think the Ada, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm really sorry. Perhaps the Ada is a little bit stiffer as it tends to be but it does soften as you're working with it, as you have it in your hand and, and as you're stitching. Um, I personally love the feel of it. It's, as I said, it's not crunchy and it's not loosey-goosey. Um, and those are, <laughs> those are descriptions I hear often um, on other floss tubes about other fabrics. So I thought that those were <laughs> two good extremes to position the spag art somewhere in the middle of 
Um, of course, it's, you know, our preferences are very personal. So I hope that you'll find that it is something you can work with um, if you give it a go. Um, just wanted to remind you of that. And um, as, a, as part of that conversation that we had through the comments about the fabric, um, there were quite a number of you who mentioned that you are Ada, Ada Stitchers and that you feel a little bit second class citizen sometimes on floss tube. Um, I know that of the floss tubers I have watched, there's certainly no one who would intend to make you feel like that. So I'm really sorry that you do, but I do understand where you're coming from. Um, it seems that everybody's progressing through the linens and, and that that's what you aim for. But actually, um, if you watch a broad enough range of floss tubes, you will see that there are a number of floss tubers who are working solely on Ada and they have decided that they are, that Ada is their thing and they're not going any further. You may know that Kimberly Jolly loves Ada, Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop. She loves Ada. Occasionally she tries another fabric but she always wants to come back to Ada because it's her sweet spot. It's what she loves to stitch on and that's what makes her happy. Brenda and Laura from Brenda and the Serial Starter do talk about hand-dyed linens and hand-dyed flosses a lot but they also always say you know, if Ada is your thing, then stitch on it. If it is what you love, stitch on it. When Brenda says stitch what you love, she's not just talking about patterns. She is talking about the fabric, the floss. If you love it and if it works for you, then do it and be proud to do it. Um, just in case you don't know, um, Helen D, who is a floss tuber on here, is a, an Ada stitcher. And if you want to see how beautiful Ada stitching can be, um, with no no detraction at all because it's Ada, then head over and watch Helen's channel. Um, and I also found some new floss tubers this week who are Ada stitchers too, and they are called Bonnie and Madison, and they their channel is Unfinished Stitches. So please don't feel like anyone is belittling you just because you stitch on Ada. I don't think that's the intention, and I'm sorry if there are folks for whom that is the intention, but I haven't come across them. So stitch on your Ada and be happy. I love to switch around. You will see all sorts of um, fabrics in my stitching and I enjoy all of them for different reasons at different times, different projects. So stitch what you love <laughs> and that includes the fabric. So speaking of floss tubes, um, I wanted to mention a couple of other floss tubers um, who I who have come across recently. It seems at the moment that there is a horde of new floss tubers hitting our screens and that's great, except I don't have time <laughs> to click on all of them. So I have come across some floss tubers who are a little bit into their journey. They've maybe four, five, six videos out um, and I have been meaning to go watch them and didn't, but this week I tried to catch up with a few of those folks so I did come across, um, as I said, Bonnie and, and Madison, who are the unfinished stitches. And um, they're a mum and daughter team. I enjoyed their rapport very much and I enjoyed their stitching. I would look forward to watching some more. I think that Bonnie started the channel herself and was Curly Girl Crafter. So some of you may know her. They, they're, you know, she's much more established as a um, herself than they are as a duo, but um, I really enjoyed watching them and look forward to um, watching some more because I hit the subscribe button. Deborah, who is the Kensington Cross Stitch. Um, Deborah has five or six videos out, maybe even a couple more than that. Um, I have, I watched five minutes, got interrupted one time and then it was a couple of weeks before I could get back. So yesterday I had a fun afternoon catching up with three or four of Deborah's videos. And I like the discussions that Deborah has. She had a, um, a great discussion on, on about number video number three, about what to look out for when you are making purchases for finishing items. So that was good to, to see. Um, and then the last one I'll mention today is Sally, who is Flossy Sews and Grows. She's a UK stitcher, hooray! <laughs> it's nice to meet UK stitchers. 
um, and floss tubers because there is a chance that maybe one day we'll meet in person. You never know. <laughs> so um, go and, and give Sally some support and have a look. She has some lovely projects on the go as well. Um, I'm looking forward to watching a little bit more of Sally's channel. <clears throat> I had a lovely envelope of Happy Mail arrive with me this week and I was really touched by this particular little package. So this comes from Audra and I have permission to use her name. Audra is a viewer who has won a couple of giveaways on the channel and uh, she very kindly sent me um, a lovely little envelope this week all the way from the US. So Audra has been watching for quite a time and she knows that I have a soft spot for the Helen Keller story. Um, I have been st stitching things unseen, the Lizzie Kate sampler which has a quote on it that is attributed to Helen Keller. And uh, when I first showed that, I also showed my little Helen Keller book from the Scholastic Book Club at school and talked a little bit about, um, you know, the nostalgia of, of that story and how it resonated with me as a child and has just stayed with me ever since. So Audra lives in Alabama and she lives close by the Helen Keller birthplace called Ivy Green and one day when she was up that direction, <laughs> when she was driving by, she took a little detour and she went specially to pick up a few little items for me. I'm so honoured that you went out of your way to find these things and share them with me. Um, um, it was just such a thoughtful, thoughtful thing to do. So Audra sent me um, a lovely little information leaflet from Ivy Green, which is the name of the Helen Keller birthplace in Tuscumbia. Alabama, if I'm saying that correctly. She included a little package of postcards of the, ho the home um, and there are about 10 in here and <clears throat> of the inside. So that is probably as close as I'll ever get to see this property and the photos on the postcards are amazing. So I really enjoyed looking at those and I will look at them over and over and over again. I will. <laughs> Audra sent me a lovely little note. Thank you, Audra. And she also found this first day of issue stamp, um, stamped envelope. So I think this has something to do with the 100th anniversary of Helen Keller's birth and she must have been awarded First Lady of Courage at some point. My knowledge is, is lacking, but, but this is lovely. So this is Helen and Annie, obviously. And then she, Audra also included this commemorative quarter. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Can you see that it's got Helen Keller on it? It says Alabama 1819, Helen Keller, and I think it's 2002. I mean, Helen is seated on a chair it looks like she's reading, yes, yeah, she's reading Braille with her fingers. And beneath that, there's a little banner that says Spirit of Courage. So I thought, let's see if you can see it. Actually, you can see it better on the screen than I was able to see it. So Audra, thank you so much. These are real treasures. And, and I am so honoured and honestly blown away that, that you went out of your way to pick up so, such thoughtful little souvenirs for me. So thank you very, very much, Audra. Okay, I have a little bit of happy meal to pass on myself uh, in the form of the giveaway from last time. So last time I showed you the afternoon tea project bag that I had made for one of you and you had to put the word tea in your comment if you were interested last time. I think this might be the biggest giveaway I've ever had. <laughs> there were 129 of you who were interested in receiving this bag, but there can only be one winner. And that winner is Kathy Deal. So Kathy, congratulations. This project bag has your name on it. So Kathy, this bag will come to you if you are international as in you're not in the UK, uh, which I think there's every chance you're not. <laughs> um, 
there may be a delay in me getting this to you because I am not sure that our international mail service issue has been fully resolved yet. So I know that we can send cards, just like a carded envelope um, in the mail now, but I'm not sure if we can send parcels yet. But when I find out, um, I will make sure that this um, comes to you as soon as it can. So Kathy, please contact me. Either use the email that's in the drop down box below or contact me on by sending a private message on Instagram and let me know your address so that I can pop this in the post to you as soon as mail is possible. <laughs> And thank you all for your interest um, in the tea bag. <laughs> so let's talk about some stitching. I've had a number of bugs. I've had more ripping out than I have stitching in some cases. I have been distracted. Um, <laughs> I have stitched things I didn't plan to stitch and not stitched what I did plan to stitch. So it's all been a bit topsy-turvy. Um, it's all been good and it's all been fun. It just hasn't been, well, the frogging wasn't fun. <laughs> I'll qualify that. Um, yeah, so I have lots of little bits to show with you and then I'm going to do a little stash spotlight again um, this week. So let me show you a couple of finishes that I've had. So last time I told you I had worked on a few of the hands-on design freebies that Kathy puts out in honour of her anniversary and she puts them out around Valentine's Day each year. This one is called Meant to Be <clears throat> and I stitched it on a piece of linen that I dyed myself. It's not a stitcher's linen so it's not even which is why it hasn't come out quite the right shape <laughs> and why my honeycombs are not quite the right, they're not quite equal. But uh, I hope that I will be able to finish this in the hexagon shape that Kathy used um, eventually. So I enjoyed that little stitch. And then I had a new start and finish. And this was the Strawberry Fair Sal. Strawberry Fair is a pattern by October House Fibre Arts. Here we go. And the sale was being hosted by Helen D and Carla at Cobweb Corner. And this sale started on Valentine's Day, although I didn't start it until a couple of days later because I had my own sale starting on Valentine's Day. So there is a hashtag for this sale if you are interested. It is hashtag Strawberry Fair Sale. And I'm quite sure that you could go on and join now. There were, there's no deadline. It was just kind of an open sale. Um, so if you have this pattern or want to get this pattern and join the sale, um, please do. I started to stitch, um, as I said, a couple of days after Valentine's and I couldn't stop. I could not stop. I became obsessed. This was another bug I got <laughs> and I became obsessed stitching this. And as you can see, I got it finished. It's just beautiful. I enjoyed every stitch. I I think it went so quickly for me because I started with the vines and then the bird and I came down here across the bottom and then up here and I left the berry to the end. I actually think if I had started with the berry I might have been a lot slower because I mightn't have seen the progress and then wanted to pursue that if that makes sense because the berry is intense and I think I could have maybe gotten bogged down if I'd started in the berry. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's an, and I'm, I'm not saying this to put any of you off. In fact, I hardly recommend this chart. Go for it if you have it, if you like it, stitch it. It's just, it's just the patternation is so beautiful, but it's hard to follow on the chart. So it was, it was a bit of work. Um, in the berry and I think if I'd started with that I would have been a lot slower so I you know I zoomed through these bits and then I was getting here and I was like oh I'm nearly finished I'm nearly finished and I kept going and of course I wasn't nearly finished because I got all of this today <laughs> but there was motivation there and I just absolutely loved it so as I said I really became obsessed the plans for the other stitching days I had just went out the window and I focused on this one 
So I think it's good to go with what your heart wants to do sometimes if there's no, you know, there's no reason not to. Um, and if it's something that you're really enjoying, just, you know, just go with that flow while it lasts, really. <laughs> so that was the Strawberry Fair Sal. Another bug that I was bitten by <laughs> this last week or so, it was a gifty bug. So um, I have had some ideas rattling around in my head for far too long about little gifts that I want to um, share with some folks. And um, I've had, you know, an inkling of an idea, but haven't quite been able to pin down what I want to, what I want to do for that gift. And, um, and I kind of just got a bit of a bee in my bonnet about it <laughs> during the week. About how it, I really need to get on and, and just make a decision and do something. So I did. Um, I did make a start on those anyway, um, on a couple of them. And what, I, what it meant was that I got very tied up in graph paper and pencil. <laughs> and I was adjusting some patterns, adding two patterns. Um, and basically just making adjustments to accommodate a bit of personalization of some patterns. So I do have one that I will kind of share with you. Um, so this <coughs> gift will be based on the chart, A Cheerful Giver. This is another October House Fiber Arts. And I'm hoping one day to stitch this one for myself. But um, this, as I percolated the gift idea that I had in the mind, um, I knew I wanted to personalize it differently, um, but I wanted to use the basis of the charting. So I did a little bit of work. I had to extend it slightly, um, which means there's a fifth flower across the bottom to accommodate slightly longer wording <laughs> up here. Um, and I had to omit this, I, this little motif. So basically I just played with it and, uh, and adjusted it and changed colors and that sort of thing to make this gift a little bit more personal to the recipient. Um, so yeah, let me show you sort of what I've done. <laughs> I'm not going to reveal all just yet. Um, so you can see I've put a very ugly sticky note <laughs> across it. But hopefully you can see that I have stitched obviously blue and green. Believe it or not, there are two different blue threads and two different green threads in there, but the shading from the paler blue into the darker blue seemed to continue um, quite well. So I'm not, I'm not convinced you can really tell <laughs> that there are two different blue threads and two different green threads. One of the uh, unique things about this, <laughs> this piece of stitching is it's my first ever stitch on 40 count linen. So that was interesting. <laughs> this is a piece of 40 count mallow that I got from 123 Stitch and it's just a little piece. I um, 123 Stitch do offer these little pieces which are nice um, to try. So I have a couple of them in my stash because I, I've never stitched on a 40 count before. And I bought a couple of pieces um, just to try them out and to see what the what the colors were like and that sort of thing. So um, these are not over dyed. I think these are. Um, I'm not sure if Mallow is a is a Swigart or not, um, but anyway, it's it's a lovely. It was a challenge to move up to the forty count linen, but I enjoyed it, and I'm not going to go back. Well, I will. Oh. I'm not going to stitch everything on 40 count, I'm not trying to say that, but I am going to stitch more on 40 count um, in the future. Um, and I enjoyed this, um, even though it was a challenge. It's just a step up, it's smaller. It was harder to see the holes in, the, in this piece of um, linen, but I do have good light and magnifier and I wouldn't be without them <laughs> for this, certainly not yet. Um, so I do love how dainty the stitching looks in one over two threads on this 40 count mallow. So I hope that I will be able to show this to you when it's fully finished, um, perhaps after it has been received. So before it leaves my hands, I will record a little snippet that I can put into a later video. Um, I think I... I think it worked reasonably well, um, the charting, and you know that I was able to kind of continue um, add another flower in 
continue the patterns up here and you know graph paper and a pencil and an eraser were, <laughs> were very handy for all of that um, and under here there is some personalized wording and um, I don't want to give the game away just yet but um, hopefully I will be able to show that um, before too much longer. So that was another new start, an unplanned start and a challenge because it was the new 40 count uh, linen stitch for me. So those are my finishes. Uh, oh, I have one more finish, which is another project bag. This one will be a gift as well. But isn't that beautiful fabric? It's a mode of three sisters fabric called porcelain. I love it. I was stitching yesterday morning with a friend. Um, she was finishing, um, she was trimming some blocks and I thought I was going to lose this one. I thought she was going to take it with her. She liked it so much. Um, that's a slightly better view of the colour. It's not just quite as dark as it looks there. A little bit, but it's beautiful. Beautiful grown up fabric, as we said <laughs> yesterday. But I didn't let her take it, so it, it's going to be a gift. <laughs> um, now I have some whips as well. So you know that I was starting the Rejoice Evermore Sal. Um, we're hashtagging this, hashtag Rejoice Sal. And I'm starting this with Yoanita from Stitchy Things. And I'm happy to say with many of others of you over on Instagram. Thank you so much for your response to this sale. Thank you for joining in. Some of you are Zooming along, it's great. Um, I haven't been, I wouldn't say quite Zooming along. So <laughs> um, I have to admit that I got distracted from my own sale by the Strawberry Fair sale. <laughs> so um, anyway, this is Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread, Rejoice Evermore. Here's the booklet for the chart. And we started this on Valentine's Day on February the 14th. And I made a start in the top left corner. And I got that beautiful border well underway. So the border is, this much border is the first page really of the chart. Um, the colours are beautiful. I'm stitching this on 36 count linen. Um, it is Spike Arts Platinum linen. So it's 36 count Edinburgh Platinum. And it's beautiful. Really, really nice linen. That's the better colour there. Really, really nice linen for um, a sampler. So I'm really pleased with my progress, given that it was two nights stitching. <laughs> and that I abandoned it in favor of somebody else's style. Naughty me. <laughs> but there's plenty of time and I loved it. I'm stitching one over two on this linen um, and I'm using the call for threads. So that is my start on Rejoice Style. It is fun seeing folks start in different places. So if you hop over to the hashtag on Instagram, you'll see the different starts that there have been and the progress so far. So I'm looking forward to more of that and if I can avoid future distractions. <laughs> Sorry, I just decided I need to pull that chair a bit closer to me. There's all my stitching is stacked on the chair, but I had it a little bit far away today. Next up is my daily thread stitch. I am stitching the uh, Real Comfort Jane Austen sampler by Modern Folk Embroidery. If you want to join me on this, I have a little hashtag SMS for So Me Sarah, SMS Real Comfort Sal. So I have been stitching one thread a day on this. Um, every day, <laughs> um, pretty much every day, maybe a couple of days I missed. And here is my progress. I've been stitching it since um, New Year's Eve. So I would be a little bit further on if I hadn't, I had to sit last night and unpick lots and lots <laughs> and lots of this roof here. But um, I just got a stitch out and it was, yeah, it was making a big difference. And of course I didn't notice until I had stitched on quite a bit further in it and I had to take out you can see there's some 
fluff there, so I'll have to clear that off. Um, but I am making um, I am making happy progress. I do have a little problem. So here in the stem, just right here, there are three rows of stitches. And at the end of the third row, I stopped and went to have my dinner. <laughs> and when I came back from dinner, I didn't count again. I just started into the next block section. <laughs> and I should have put in a fourth row. So my tree stem is one stitch short, which means all of this is one stitch high. And of course, it wouldn't matter a jot, except I already have the border in across the bottom. So I'm going to have to think of a way of fudging, <laughs> fudging that. So I think probably I will increase the spacing uh, down below in the alphabet section and create one extra space somewhere down here. Um, yeah, anyway, it happens. Um, I would fix it if I hadn't already done all of this before I noticed, <laughs> but you know, it's not the end of the world and it can be, it can be fixed somehow and no one will be any the wiser, I'm sure, in the future. So I'm really happy with how much progress you can see when, when you're doing a daily thread. Um, over a, a continuous period of time. Um, I don't normally do my daily thread project as a from start start to finish that whole project as one thread a day. Um, normally I pick up a project that has already been worked on that's maybe coming to completion, nearing completion, and I'll pick that up as a thread a day to um, to get it to the finish or something that I have has been languishing for a wee while and I haven't really just got, got the love for um, and sometimes working one thread a day will help me you know fall back in love with the project and, and get it underway and um, this time I decided that this stitch will be um, one thread a day from beginning to end so it is interesting to see it come together um, um, over that period of time so January and February stitching really has has created this with only a, I only missed a couple of days here and there so there we go, that is my progress on Real Comfort. Next, I have a tiny bit of progress on Things Unseen. This is the um, sampler which has the Helen Keller quote that I referred to earlier in it. I'm stitching this on 32 count uh, um, Spygart linen uh, in the color blush. It's a beautiful pale pink. And my progress this time is down here in this house, which was a lot of fill in. You can see I'm still working to fill in the grass below the house, but this was a handy one for um, stitching during the Across the Pond Stitch and Chat Zoom um, on the 11th of February. So it was nice to be able to have something that was outlined and just sit and fill in as I was listening to the chat that was going on in the Zoom call. So that's just another little bit of progress on that one. Um, oh, I should show you the pattern. Sorry, this is one I haven't got the pattern out for. So this is a three-part pattern by Lizzie Kate. It's available from 123 Stitch. You need to buy all three parts. Um, and the, oh, that's the wrong one. And the picture of the design is only on the last pattern because it was it was a mystery style originally. So that is things unseen. Okay, my last piece of stitching that I worked on was I did a little bit on A Saviour's Praise. This is an original sampler by Shakespeare's Peddler. Love it, love it, love it. I'm just savouring the stitches on this one. So for this time, it was just one evening's work because you know I got distracted by all the other things <laughs> and I did these letters and again I would have maybe had a few more letters except that I got in a flow and I kept stitching and then realized I should, I should have changed color <laughs> and that some of the letters weren't supposed to be the same as every letter <laughs> so so I unpicked and stitched in the in a the correct color. These letters I actually have changed the color of. Um, 
the thread that that is called for for those letters does make them ghost out a little bit and Laurie Holt had changed hers to this thread so I have copied Laurie because you know she makes very good choices <laughs> so I didn't want mine um, the letters to ghost out too much so that is a little bit of progress on Saviour's Praise and I'm quite happy just to see that ticking along a little bit at a time so that is all of my stitching and um, yes you can see I hopped about I got bitten and distracted by various bugs in the last couple of weeks um, one of the other bugs I got bitten by was um, plans to finish things. So I was watching Michelle at Penny's Daughter Shares and Michelle and someone else, I'm sorry I can't remember who, are doing um, a fully finishing challenge for 2023. You should go and watch her uh, latest video to see her, her finishes. So she's finishing up lots of things and... Um, I had watched her last, last video and I got really inspired thinking, yeah, I've got a pile of things just over here to my right and I really should be finishing some of them. I should be um, doing something with them. Part of the problem is I hadn't been shopping to see if I could find anything to put the finishes on. So I did that. That was um, <clears throat> another little adventure. I went shopping and I found a few frames and I found an Easter egg shaped thing that I can frame in and um, which I'm hoping to put my uh, happy Easter from Caterpillar cross stitch in and so I'm hoping that I will in the next few weeks I'm hoping maybe by the time I come back I'll have mm, at least one at least the Easter one to show you um, I picked up a couple of other frames in the range and I have plans for some of the finishes then that I that I did finished last year and hope then to be able to get them mounted and up. I'm not sure that I'm going to frame them behind the glass. I might frame them on top of the glass. So I've got decisions to make, but I have all this in my head, all whirling around, detracting from stitching time, but still part of the stitchy adventure. So yeah, so all of those bugs, have, you know, that's the result of them is that I didn't have massive stitchy progress, um, but I still had some this last couple of weeks. So last time I showed you my spring projects, uh, my spring patterns and Easter patterns and, um, and lots of you enjoyed that little stash dive. So today I thought we would take a dive into my kits. And um, it was interesting because um, Deborah at Kensington Cross Stitch, I've been planning to talk about this all week and yesterday when I was listening to to Deborah, she was talking a little bit about kits in one of her early videos too, saying, you know, this is all there was. Kits were all there was back in the day. <laughs> um, maybe there was magazines and you could buy a bit of Ada and some DMC um, if you wanted to stitch something yourself um, that wasn't kitted. But on the whole, kits were our entry point to the hobby. And I think that um, they're underrated nowadays. Um, and I think we could bring back a resurgence of the kit. <laughs> but we do seem to, well, I just think that um, the hobby has grown and, and now it's much more common for people to buy the pattern separately and then fabric and then choose the threads that you want to use. And that's all much more common now than, than buying a kit perhaps. But I think there's still a lot of value to be had from kits, particularly as an entry point into the hobby. I think it's very cost effective when you buy a kit. So for example, this is a dimensions kit. You get everything in here that you need. So if you have never tried cross stitch before, you could buy this for the princely sum of $12.99 and you could do it. You could stitch it. You don't have to have anything else except a pair of scissors because in the kit you will usually have your fabric, your threads, the pattern, and there's usually also a needle. So everything that you need is here. The kit, as it suggests, is self-contained. It's all here for you. 
Um, and I think this is a great entry point because you don't have to have anything else. You don't have to worry about costly equipment. You can do all of that later. <laughs> Once you become obsessed, then you can go into the route of buying speciality things um, and, you know, and treating yourself to the goodies that are available um, and are there also to be enjoyed. But I do think that kits, maybe not as starting with a Dimensions Gold collection, I should say, <laughs> But if you've never stitched anything, you might want to start with something a little bit more simple. <laughs> but the kits in general are a great starting point. And, you know, there are these traditional um, brands, the likes of Dimensions, you've Luca S. Um, and there are new folks coming out with kits all the time. I think there's someone called So Sophie. I've seen some lovely, um, great beginner entry point kits from her. Of course, Caterpillar Cross Stitch have fabulous kits for beginners and more advanced stitchers alike. Um, and, and I just, I think it's great. I think there's nothing nicer in some ways than getting everything you need for a craft project, whether that's knitting or crocheting or patchwork or cross stitch or embroidery. There's nothing nicer than, than getting it all together. You've got everything you need when you're ready to start. Um, so kits were where I started, you know, of course that you were monogamous you bought a kit you stitched your kit you finished your kit you went and bought a new kit <laughs> so that was how it worked and then maybe after a wee while you bought a magazine and you you know ventured into a, a piece of ada a blank canvas that you could work on yourself and um, so that was that was part of my journey um, and i i still as i said i still think there's value to be had in kits and you're going to see that I still love a kit because I have a whole basket of them here to share with you today. So this one, as you can see, this is my basket. Take that project bag off and then you can see. Yeah, there's quite a few, isn't there? Mm -hmm. We'll not talk about it in too much detail. <laughs> okay, so let me show you. I have several of the Dimensions Gold kits. I stitched um, A Kiss for Snowman um, recently. Um, kind of finished it up before Christmas and loved it. I saw this one um, on Stitchy Lonka's floss tube. So Elonka was, is, I think she still is stitching this. I don't think she has finished it. And I was just totally enabled. And it was so easy because it's on Amazon. Click, click. <laughs> so I stitched that one. I not stitched, I purchased that one. And I also have these two, which are right up there with my kind of Christmas aesthetic. So the coffee shop and the toy shop. Okay. What I will do is, because I'm not, I'm not going to spend lots, of, I don't want to bore you, but I wanted just to show you the range of kits that but I have kits that are available. I'm not going to find the links for all of these kits, um, but I will put all of their names and all of the brands in. So I will tell you that that is Toy Shop and it's Dimensions Gold Collection um, down in the notes below so that if you are interested, if you are having trouble finding anything, if you are interested and you want to, um, to purchase, if you're having trouble, please just ask in the comments and if I can help you find it. I will, okay. Um, the other kits that are available and popular are Mill Hill kits. So I have two here in my, I think just two in this little stash. Um, I have one behind this little love um, heart. And it is from a series um, called I Love Charmed Ornaments. And I have another one, which is Love Stitching. I saw Natalie at So Nat So finish this one recently. It looks really good, Natalie. And I have this one that I got as a Christmas present, which is the Holiday Harmony series, and it's a heart. A little bit of Irish connection there. <laughs> so, um, so Mill Hill kits could come various sizes. I don't have much experience. I've stitched, I think, two, maybe three two or three now. Um, I enjoyed them. These were a great entry point into a new technique actually because they're tiny and they have beads and I had never tried 
stitching with beads before and this was a nice way to do it and again cost effective I don't have to go and buy 14 different tubs of beads to have 14 different colors of beads because everything I need is already pre-packaged for me so am I selling these kits to you <laughs> I should be on some kind of commission no I'm just kidding <laughs> I'm not next I have this Riolas kit for a biscornu Again, there's some beading in this, so I've got everything I need um, in the kit. And I've got anchor thread and Swigart fabric. So one of the one of the cons, if you like, of a kit is that you you're receiving the fabric. So you may get a fabric that you don't like, that you wouldn't normally choose to stitch on. You could always swap it out if that's not going to be too expensive for you. Um, you know, or just use the established brands that are using a, a good quality fabric. It can be a little bit harder to tell if you're purchasing kits that are um, perhaps not from the country that you're from um, and not a brand that you recognize. Um, but most of the kits that I have been lucky enough to use have had decent fabric in it. It may just be that you don't want to stitch on Ada. This one actually has even weave. And it's a, and it's Vigor, you can tell by the, the orange band on the selvage. So today we also have some great cross stitch designers and um, smaller independent companies who are producing their designs and kitting them up so that we can purchase them. So um, I have some that I purchased um, from Isle Forest Embroidery. Um, this one is bees the gold I think it's called the golden bees yeah golden bees and then there was um this hummingbird one as well it didn't come in a box so you get you know your fabric and your threads you get everything again in in these kits um, we have in the UK we have the historical sampler company who are producing kits this one is lovely, this one is Christmas Eve. Now, I will say that this particular kit does not come on this color of a, well, the color of the fabric is not as the photograph represents it. So the color of the fabric was much, much more of a sage green color, a deep sage green color, not this kind of aqua color. So I have actually changed my fabric um, in this kit because I wanted it to be more like the picture. But that, that is a, just a very small anomaly. Mostly the kits come as pictured. I just, there must have been some kind of color issue with the, either the printer or the photograph. Here's another one from the historical sampler company. All things grow with love. Again, good chart, fabric and thread are all in there. I have got a magic needle. Kit. And this is the cup and apple blossom. Then the bees in there. I have got winter house. And I've got winter cottage. Let me show you. Winter cottage. Okay. And you'll see a theme I have. I like Christmassy kind of kits. <laughs> so I've also got. Uh, Christmas Eve. I need to get started on some of these. <laughs> I have got the Enchantress Winter. Can you see how much white stitching there's going to be? <laughs> white and grey stitching. These kind of charts and kits are probably as close as I'm ever going to get to full coverage. Let me just tell you now. <laughs> and then this was one that Hubby bought me for Christmas this year. And I think it's also called Christmas Eve. Yeah, this one is Luca S. Christmas Eve. I love, love, love the post box. Okay. Um, let's see, what else have I got? I have this little cutie, which is, I have no idea what it's called. And I cannot pronounce it's Alyssa Collection. 
Melissa collection go. Um, so it's a cute little chart. I obviously had a notion of stitching at some point. <laughs> More magic needle. These time, this time they're flowers, a dahlia and a peony. And then I have some, some kits that were in subscription boxes. So this is another great way that you can have a kit these days, is order a subscription box. And I ordered the boxes for a little while from Cotton and Twine. From the, it, Cotton and Twine is the historical sampler company's subscription service. Um, so I have several kits. Everything came, even the little bag, the little jute bag is in this kit. You can see it there. I have my kits now in some of these plastic colors, but they came in a very pretty box, which I wish I'd kept them in actually. But anyway. <laughs> Um, so this is, yeah, this, a subscription box is another great way of, of getting kits these days. Um, so I have that one and I have this one called Autumn Falls, which was part of, um, they did four in that year. They did four seasonal ones. I think that Autumn is the only one I have left. I actually, um. I actually passed on my uh, a couple of the others that I had because lots of folks were looking for them. Lots of folks subscribed at times but missed one of the charts um, and were looking um, for them. So autumn, the autumn one is the only one I have left. So I won't stitch all of the series um, if I get around to stitching this. My final two kits are <laughs> Lilliput Lane. You may remember the little cottages. My mom collected them. I had this chart, uh, this kit a long time ago, but I never stitched it. And then in 2019, I de-stashed my cross stitch. I thought I'll never cross stitch again. And I de-stashed the cross stitch that I had. It wasn't a huge amount, but there were some nice things in there. <laughs> I de-stashed anyway, gave it, to, um, gave it away. And um, then I came across this on an eBay search not so long ago and thought I had to have it again. <laughs> so there is a problem in this kit in that the fabric is marked. I'm not sure if that will come out, but it would be easy to replace the fabric. Um, didn't pay a lot for it. And my final kit is the uh, turquoise teacups by Luca S. So you can see I've got plenty to keep me busy <laughs> and I really should get on with some of them. So to that end, what I thought I would do is I will have a kit stitch along. Are you in? Would you join me? Do you have a kit lying around your house that you've always meant to stitch and haven't? Um, are you interested just in purchasing a kit to join in the sal? It's going to be a very open sal. We're going to start on the 10th of April or thereabouts from the 10th of April, which is Easter Monday. Um, we're going to have the sal. It's going to be on Instagram. We're going to use the hashtag get your kit on sal. And we are going to stitch our kits and enjoy them. <laughs> so when I say kit, I mean anything of the type that I've shown here. So something that came as a traditional kit, like a Luca S or a Dimensions, or maybe a Mill Hill, and they come in different sizes. You can have much bigger Mill Hills. These are just the little ornament ones. Maybe you'd like to go um, and investigate some of the folks that I've shown and see what kind of kits they have that you would like. Or maybe you have kits from a subscription box like the cotton and twine box. Um, and you think it's time that you got some stitches in on that fabric. If you'd like to join me, you're very welcome. If nobody joins me, I'm still gonna have a go myself. <laughs> it's going to be open-ended, no pressure with dates or deadlines or anything like that. Just pick up your kit, put it in your regular rotation and move on. Oh, I found another kit. Oh, it's another cotton and twine. See, I told you. <laughs> I bought this subscription and loved them, but just haven't got around to stitching them. So there's another one. 
So as I said, from the 10th of April, we'll be starting the Get Your Kit On Sale. And it would be lovely if you have kits and would like to join um, just to see all of the different variety that you have. Obviously, if you're going to post a picture, tell us what the kit is and who the designer is, um, just in case any of us are inspired and interested in making a purchase of our own. So um, from the, on the 10th of, or of April or thereabouts, um, I will plan a start of one of my kits. Now, whenever I uh, did my plans for the year, I had two kits in there. And the two that I had in my plans for the year are Winter Cottage by Magic Needle and the Turquoise Teacups by Luca S. So I thought we would do a viewer's choice and have a little poll today so that you can decide which one of these I'm going to stitch in April. Now, I don't want you to be swayed by the fact that this is Christmas and you may not be feeling Christmas in April. I am very happy to stitch, well, it's winter, so it's not really Christmas, it's winter. I'm very happy to stitch winter at any time of the year. So that doesn't need to sway you, okay? The seasonal aspect. <laughs> but which of these two kits would you like to see me start on the 10th of April? If you would like me to start the winter cottage, use the word cottage in your comments. And if you would like me to start the teacups, use the word cup. So cottage and cup. And I will stitch whichever you choose, because that's fun to do. <laughs> if you don't have a kit and would like one, perhaps today's share away will be for you. A very kind viewer passed on this Blessings Mill Hill Button and Beads Autumn Series Kit. And I am going to share it with one of you guys. If you would like it, please use the word count in your comment today. I will be happy to post this anywhere. So international entries are welcome. Please be over 18 so that I can ask for your address. Please don't use words that will attract trolls like freebie, giveaway, winner, okay? Um, and it would be nice if you were a subscriber. <laughs> so use the word count if you would like this. Also, if you just like it, you don't have to be doing the sal <laughs> and you don't have to have no kits of your own if you like it, you're very welcome to enter the share away. So those are my plans, you know, um, the plans are to, to have the kit, um, which you're going to pick for me and that will form part of my April stitching. We're just about to hit March, which I can't really believe. So I am going to sit down tomorrow and plan some of my stitching for March, which I hope will be a um, continuation of most of what you've seen today and some of my other, um, some of my other stitching as well, like a family patchwork, um, the um, modern folk embroidery, a big, huge piece that I'm stitching. Um, so yeah, I've got lots to keep me busy if I don't get too distracted, but I do have some of those finishes in mind and I have still some of those gifty stitches to do. So I'm going to try and factor those into my plans for the month so that I'm not actually abandoning everything else in their favour <laughs> this time. So that is all from me today. I think um, you'll be glad to know. Phew, it was a long video. Um, but I hope that you too have good plans, that you've had fun stitching, whether it's been planned or spontaneous or whatever it is. And I hope that you've enjoyed a little chat about kits today. Let me know what you think about kits. If you hate them, that's okay. You can tell me that too. <laughs> um, but let me know what you think. And remember that the three magic words today, you could receive this if you, would, if you use the word count in your comment. And if you use the word cup or cottage, you will be helping me to choose my stitch for the Get Your Kit On Sale. I'm going to love you and leave you. And I hope that you will stay well and stitch happy until next time. Bye.